Hi, it's Handy Andy Tech Tips here. Well, it wasn't too long ago that AI image generators were cutting edge tech. The first versions of models like DALI or Midjourney created images that looked a bit fake, and they also had some major issues with legible text. But with the latest versions of these models, or alternatives like Google's Nano Banana Pro, users can make images that look incredibly photorealistic. Some might argue a bit too realistic. But forget about images, because the next frontier in generative AI is video. You might remember the collective astonishment mixed with concern and outcry when OpenAI's Sora was announced in early 2024. People were shocked to see the quality of its output, especially when compared to previous tools, like the one used to create the infamous Will Smith eating spaghetti video. Well, Sora is now up to version 2 and is more realistic than ever. But after years of playing catch up to OpenAI, Google currently has a video model that is just as good, and in some respects maybe even better. It's called Vio, so let's take a look at it. Now, there are two main ways to use Vio. You can access it via the Gemini chat interface by just asking it to create a video. But the company also has an awesome tool called Flow, which they describe as a filmmaking tool, and it lets you build a scene out of multiple Vio clips and play it back on a timeline. In order to use Flow, I'd recommend shelling out for a Google AI Pro subscription. Currently, at the time of recording, this is 20 US dollars a month or 33 Australian dollars. As part of your Pro subscription, you get 1,000 monthly AI credits. These are used up when you're generating a video. Now, I prefer to use VO3, which is a model that includes the synchronized audio. So with this model, it's currently 20 credits per video for what they call fast generation, or 100 credits per video for a quality generation. I think that the fast option produces results that are decent quality, and you can generate 50 videos per month instead of 10, so I'd stick with that. To get started, go to the Flow website, which is at labs.google slash fx slash tools slash flow. You'll see a screen with your recent projects, which obviously won't show anything if you've only just signed up. So you want to click on the new project button at the bottom of the screen. You'll then get the prompt box here, and you'll want to check a couple of settings. The aspect ratio should be set to portrait if you're going to make a TikTok video or a YouTube short. Otherwise, you can leave it on landscape. You can choose the number of videos generated per prompt. It's on two by default, which gives you like two different alternatives. But if you want to save credits, you can set it to one, which is what I'll do. Then the model should be VO 3.1 fast. Now I'm going to type in a prompt about um, a dog chasing a bone in a meadow, and I'll see what it comes up with. So it usually takes a minute or two to generate the video, and I'll skip forward. And after it's done, um, you can play it. Not too bad. The object looks more like a balloon than a solid dog bone, but that's okay. You can then add your clips to a scene to extend the length of the video. Each individual clip is around 8 seconds long, but you can join many of them together to make a complete short. So click on this button here, uh, and Flow will go into the scene builder mode. Now if you've used a basic video editor like iMovie, this should look a bit familiar. There is a timeline of sorts, and you can play the clips on it. There is also a plus button beside the clip, and you can click on that and you'll be given options to either jump to or extend the clip. I want to go to a different scene. So I'll click jump to and then type in uh, the prompt in which there will be a close up shot of the dog eating the bone. I'll submit it and then whoops. It turns out jump to is only supported for the VO 3.1 quality model, which as you'll remember takes 100 credits per generation. I don't want to spend that much. So I'll just get rid of that uh, and I'll click extend instead. Now, if you're clever with your prompting, you can get it to cut to an entirely different scene in this mode, but I'll just take the hint and I'll say that the dog will finally catch the bone and start chewing on it. Now to wait, and for a minute or two of course, and there we go, my new clip has appeared on the timeline. I can play this through and check it. Of course, it's a bit small. If I had a higher screen resolution uh, in this browser, it would show up better. And now I can download it by clicking the download button over here. And here's the finished result, complete with sound. Now, I'm sure you'll agree, that's a very good result for an entirely synthetic clip. Just a word of caution though, if you're going to be uploading AI-generated videos to social media, 
please make sure that you very clearly label the fact that they are AI. This technology can be used to deceive people, and while that's not such a big deal for these funny dog videos, with different subject matter it could be very serious indeed. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Handy Andy, and thanks so much for watching.